Hi, I'm Russ Webb, and I'm the registrar for the CPCA. And this is the second video in terms of preparation for the CPCA qualifying exam. And so let's get started. So some may ask, why have a qualifying exam? Why, does, why do we need to have a qualifying exam to enter into a professional association like the CPCA? Well, there are many reasons, and here are just a few as to why we have a qualifying exam. First off, the CPCA is dedicated to a competency model. Competency is uh, recognizing that we need a certain level of functioning and quality of service when dealing with clients and that competency cannot be assumed by any specific kind of degree. Secondly, ensuring clinical competency helps to ensure that the public can put their trust in the CPCA professional counselors. And to hold a designation of whether, doesn't matter what that designation is, is a declaration that this person has a basic professional competency to practice in their profession, is committed to standards in their practice, and is committed to ethical code in their practice. So ultimately, it is about the protection of the public. The CPCA is committed to endeavoring to protect the public from incompetency. So we strive for having competency within our organization. The qualifying exam has a number of different characteristics. And of course, that's really why you're watching this is to learn more about the competency exam. First, it's online. And if you wanna see what it looks like, make sure you watch a video number one for more details. Secondly, it's timed, and there's a total of four hours to complete it. It requires 70% to successfully pass the exam, and it's made up of 150 questions. It is mostly multiple choice questions. However, there are a few matching questions as well as eight questions requiring written response. And it requires studying and preparation for most people. So people want to understand what is the exam like? And the most important word I can use to, to describe the exam is that it's practical but based on clear clinical thinking and education. So there'll be no questions that ask for specific names of people, for example. There'll be no questions that ask for specific aspects of science or neuroscience. There'll be no questions that ask for any dates of any kind or questions of st statistics of any kind or questions that are intentionally trying to trick you in any way. We do not want to have any kind of trick questions. Take the question at face value. And, but of course, we really want to understand, well, what content is covered? Uh, that's the burning question. And the content is based upon the CPCA core competencies. So, I shared with you what kind of questions aren't on the exam. So what kind of questions are there on the exam? What, how does it work? And so here's some examples. There are questions that ask about, for example, the meaning or understanding of a clinical concept or questions that give a scenario and ask for a clinical question about that scenario or questions that ask about clinical counseling skills. There are also questions about clinical counseling approaches, as well as clinical counseling practice. And we ask questions about the therapeutic relationship and establishing a therapeutic relationship. There are questions about ethical practice or ethical issues, as well as questions dealing with crisis or questions that ask about the code of ethics or ethical principles. And of course, there are questions about common disorders seen in clinical practice. And we ask questions about specific aspects of business in clinical practice. So these are some of the elements of uh, the kind of questions that we ask in the 
qualifying exam. And of course, the question comes to us, are there any specific textbooks for the qualifying exam? And in short, the answer is no. There are no specific list of textbooks to study from, but there are many textbooks that would apply to the topic areas addressed. So the exam is based on the CPCA core competencies. Uh, and as we look at core competencies, you will need to consider the textbooks that you have used that cover those competencies. You'll also need to read through the Code of Ethics in preparation for this exam. So the core competencies document looks like this, and the URL for finding this document is at the bottom of this page, but it's also uh, accessible through the website directly. So what are the eight core competency areas that are going to be tested? Good question, glad you asked. So the first is counseling foundations and then counseling interventions. Third is counseling processes. Fourth is counseling skills and techniques. Fifth is ethics and ethical practice. Sixth is reflective practice and seven is professional practice. And the last area is professional communication. So these are the eight core competency areas that are in our core competencies document. Within these eight areas is a lot more information. Let's take a look. So in first area of core competencies is counseling foundations. And counseling foundations is knowing the psychological health development, as well as, well, developmental psychology, for example, and as well as dysfunction, understanding dysfunction and how it works. So part of the courses or uh, aspects of study would be on human development and functioning, studying culture and diversity, uh, ethical framework and mental health issues and problems that are common in counseling. The second area is counseling interventions. This is where we want to know when and how to complete successful interventions. And part of that is clinical assessment, crisis intervention, as well as conflict resolution. The third area is counseling processes. And counseling processes is, is having the knowledge and the skills to work with client issues. And so along with the counseling process is the recognition that there's an orientation to the counseling process. And then there's assessment and therapeutic relationship and therapeutic process. And then finally closure. And there are elements associated with all of these processes. And then there is also counseling skills and techniques that are basic counseling skills and techniques that all therapists should have. So it's not specific counseling skills of advanced training or advanced techniques or anything like that. No, these are core basic counseling skills and techniques. And these are using skills to build that therapeutic relationship. So we have the therapeutic relationship and of course, therapeutic communication and processes. And the fifth area, of course, is ethics and ethical practice. Using ethical principles to guide our practice to ensure that it's best practice. And so there's a commitment to regulatory standards and understanding how regulation happens, including uh, provincial, uh, federal, provincial, municipal, as well as regulatory colleges, and those particular standards, as well as a commitment to our code of ethics and ethical practice. We have two documents that you will want to take a look at. And the first is our CPCA code of ethics. And uh, our code of ethics is core to understanding uh, how to make ethical decisions. And there's great uh, information in there as to when you end up in an ethical dilemma, how to work that through, what are the steps involved? And then secondly is our standards of practice document. Uh, both of these documents can be found on our website. 
uh, in under About Us, and then if you click on Code of Ethics. These documents would be useful to read prior to the exam. And the sixth area is reflective practice. This is about taking care of self to better take care of our clients. And so looking at the issues and areas of self-awareness, self-care and personal safety issues, and clinical supervision and personal professional congruence. These are important topics in terms of the life of a clinician. The seventh area is professional practice. This is the doing, the business of counseling. And so we have elements of clinical records, professional business practices, as well as legal relationships and consultation and collaboration. And the last area is professional communication. Professional communication is presenting oneself as a professional to the world. How do I do that? And what are, the, uh, what are the elements that need to be there? What do I need to know uh, regarding that? And part of this is re in regard to third-party support, referrals and third-party reports, as well as dealing with issues of media and social media. So those are all the areas that are covered in this particular exam. And in terms of summary, you will need to study for the qualifying exam. Uh, you will need to review the following documents, the CPCA Code of Ethics, the CPCA Standards of Practice, and in terms of the core competencies document to get a sense of what different areas could be addressed in the exam. The exam is practical in that it is an application of theory, knowledge, and skills into practice. And the exam is not insurmountable. Uh, do not get um, overly stressed by it, but recognizing that if you have the education that you need for success, then most individuals, the vast majority of applicants actually successfully complete the exam. So you can do this. So I hope this particular uh, video has been helpful to you to gain more on insight and knowledge as to what the content of the qualifying exam is. Thanks.